Thank you, Jeanette. I didn't know the name of any. I always had my own special name for these, you know, like Big Carrot. Life of the party. So much fun and then intense, you know, more than I don't remember the names anymore either. Describe a little bit. Um, I love, I will tell you the episodes, any episode that got us close to uh, Amanda and Lee expressing their real feelings towards each other and something would stop it, like when she's on the journey, <laughs> you're good at that. Um, like when she's on the journey in the ambulance and I tell her how much she's out cold and she's actually hears me saying it. Oh my God, you people freak me out. <laughs> so wow. this became a Jeopardy episode. <laughs> I know. But what is, those were the episodes I always found that they were a great tease for the audience, and it was always that just, you know, oh, please say it. And something happens, and they go. And, um, you know, the near miss kiss, those things, yes. Um, what? I was something that happened a lot. <laughs> yes, you were. But that was also the 80s, which was called uh, uh, television sexual tension. Yeah. And how long were we going to sustain this before you, the audience, got nuts and said, when are they going to kiss? When are they going to do whatever? And, uh, you know, I'm starting to see that on Cedar Cove now. I'm going, please, Andy and Dylan, please finally get to it, get it on. You know, <laughs> 2013, you're adults, okay? So, um, but Amanda and Lee had that wonderful innocence about them. That's why we look back fondly at them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. And you're absolutely right, she did. Wonderfully innocent, which so appealed to me. <laughs> Worldly as he was, you know he spoke Urdu. Uh, that is such a. You do too, Urdu. You do too. Good. Okay, what was the question? I, I thought Urdu was a noodle. Um, yes, it was. Uh, the first episode for me, like I like I said, and then uh, everyone always brings up the episode where I'm a tree. <laughs> I'm not very gonna say, memorable though. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say that was a favorite episode. I'm just gonna say that was a very memorable episode. Because the outfit was very memorable. uncomfortable. So it wasn't it wasn't seventeen hours a day uncomfortable, but it was just uncomfortable. But I love Kev for a kid, right? Um, plus, it was a uh, leotard tights, and for a young boy, that's a do it. <laughs> I don't look dirty, I enjoyed mine. Because <laughs> you, you get past the stage where you get loose it, and then you just accept it. <laughs> I'm wearing tights, you just sit there and I'm wearing tights, and my bare so, ass is hanging out. <laughs> So, and, and what's funny is everyone goes back to that. Hey, Craig, do you remember when you were a tree? <laughs> and I just kind of adjust <laughs> and say, yes, I do. <laughs> but my favorite was the first episode. That was great. They were good. Um, I also like some of them that were more, uh, uh, they were very action oriented. We had a wonderful uh, stunt team, the great stunt doubles. They're very imaginative uh, stunt people that always came up with great routines. You know, um, the one where uh, it was where it was the story of the fact the thing where I had originally had a young girlfriend who was a fellow agent, uh, Dorothy. How I got the uh, code name Scarecrow. It was the Tin Man. Off to, to see the wizard was an excellent. Was that a two parter? No, it was a single one. And I wore sort of a beetle haircut with long sideburns yeah. to try to give it a different time. Yeah. That was a really good episode. I thought that was excellent. Stephen Mock was mm -hmm. wonderful. Uh, there's so many. I mean, it's very hard for me to pick that. Um, 
I do know that at that time they were starting to get more towards an action. That's when we got the Corvette and got rid of that old speedster, that bathtub with wheels. <laughs> uh, that constantly died. I know, I know you would like that car. But the stunt puppies, they didn't, they love, they wanted to be able to tear ass around the corners, fish tail around, and go at 80 miles an hour, you know, in front of all those cops. And so <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, but we always had great routines, fights, those type of things. And, and how they worked, car uh, you know, Amanda's character into finding some housewifely common sense weapon, like a frying pan or whatever, after I was shooting it out with the bad guys. By the way, I couldn't get it barn. <laughs> he was the worst shot in the world. At 8 o'clock, at 10 o'clock, I would have been the best shot. But at 8 o'clock, we weren't allowed to kill anybody with a gun. The only bad guys did that. And then we had to find a way of getting rid of these guns so that we could finish it off. That's one blooper we don't have. And it did exist. I'm, I don't know if you remember where it might be. But there was some footage shot of me losing my gun, take after take, various episodes. Because this was for the stunt people, it was hard to figure out, oh my God, we did this last week. What are we gonna do? You know, he's this this character, he's our hero, and he's somehow gonna drop his pistol. He's gotta lose it. When we could just finish the that bad guy off right there, end the whole thing, we had to find some creative way every week for me to lose my gun. And we had a compilation of scenes of me getting slapped out, dropped, smashed, uh, whatever it was. Yes, we had that at one of the cast parties. And I don't know. <laughs> I said the cast parties. Um, she's used to it. And say it was brutal. Uh, you know, but those kind of things. And you know, uh, uh, we we uh, you know we had Gary Davis and all these guys. Who was uh, Kate? Kate had a wonderful stunt woman. I'll never forget the one, we had a British stunt woman who were overseas in the, um, in the castle where Lee grabs Amanda's hand, we go and we jump off. You've all seen that water that was outside of Munich, Germany. That water was all four feet deep. And we had to try to make it look like it was this deep lagoon, like this moat around the castle. In fact, when we got in the boat to row, we <laughs> my first take, was we didn't go anywhere because the boat was resting on the bottom of it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a blooper right there that would have been fun to find that out. And then uh, Gary Davis and this wonderful British stunt woman. I mean, she was tough as nails, gorgeous looking brunette. And um, she, <laughs> they'd grab it, and I think they did a freeze frame on it, and then they went to commercial and they came back, and then you see that they were wet. Yeah. Well, they stacked all these in that water below the wall of that castle. They stacked all these boxes. And this is a thing that we use in the stunts. They still use it to this day. I've fallen into them many, many times. You open up all these big, like uh, for refrigerators or stove, big cardboard packing boxes and pile them up and pile them up. You know, try it when you were kids, you fell off something, jumped on those things, it cushioned your fall. So if you have a number of them strategically stacked, you could be up way up high and high fall, the high fall people would do this all the time. And so, Gary and I think her name was Barbara. He grabs her hand and they go jumping off. And <laughs> they landed in the boxes. And uh, she didn't get quite get up and uh, get up. Like Gary just jumped right up and Barbara's still lying there. And everybody was, oh my God, something's happened. Well, apparently on the way down, she hit his knee with her forehead. Okay, or his knee came flying up as they went. <laughs> there on his knee of his pants, my double wardrobe, was her whole eyebrow. <laughs> it was implanted in his, the, in his pants. It's a true story. And she had no right eyebrow. <laughs> this is a good looking lady. And she goes, the typical British sort of aplomb, she goes, oh. <laughs> oh, don't like that much. <laughs> And thought nothing of it after that. Brushed it off and walked away. Oh, don't like that much. That much was not cold, you know. And, uh, here we had it. It kind of went like this and it fell apart. It was her, literally her hair. All that scraped right off. No, it wasn't false eyelash, no. She walked around and they did some pencils. She got all red there and everything for a while. But uh, she was tough, but she was good. I ended up uh, in England and she threw a party for us. 
uh, when we got to London finally one weekend, and I remember I was so missed my horses. She she was a horsewoman, uh, and she let me go down and muck out her stalls. <laughs> so here I was, then, the star of the show, cleaning up horse poop. I had to muck her stalls. Don't go there. Uh, if you're a horse person, you kind of know, right, Teresa? Thank you. <laughs>